The best laptops for engineering students combine impressive performance and graphics prowess with portability, longevity and affordability. They're not just about having plenty of power under the hood. They must also have a budget-friendly price tag, a battery life that will last a while and a chassis that's svelte and lightweight. The traditional ThinkPad philosophy is never to offer anything too radical, as the corporate market just doesn't care for much in the way of style or imagination. Therefore, the outside of this laptop is remarkably like those that came before, with the same ThinkPad branding and black color scheme. What we have with the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Extreme is a design that has been honed, like the evolution of the shark, to a point where most changes are internal rather than major external divergence. That said, Lenovo must be complimented on the engineering of this notebook's body, which combines a four-layer carbon fiber upper surface with an aluminum alloy lower chassis to provide a highly durable shell. When you consider the abuse that a machine like this might encounter in a working environment, and the high cost of replacing it, being able to take a few knocks is an absolute necessity. But it also needs to be very practical. And, not unexpectedly in its ThinkPad series, Lenovo nails that part of the equation in the ThinkPad X1 Extreme. There isn't any part of this portable which will mystify the average user on the day that they get it. All the connectors are arranged along the sides, buttons and ports are all clearly labeled, plus the keyboard and touchpad are large and responsive. It's all good, all tuned for rapid user acceptance, and ready for business. The Samsung Notebook 9 Pro builds upon the tech behemoth's modern laptop design in a way that's more uniform and closer to how it constructs smartphones. This results in a curvier laptop than ever, in both the lid and keyboard deck, with an outward silver sheen bedecked by a carbon-colored metal on the interior. The Samsung Notebook 9 Pro keyboard deck is both spacious and comfy, with a ton of room for the enormous trackpad. In spite of the size, Samsung opted for more spacing between the well-backlit keys over a numeric keyboard. Instead, extra space is given to page control keys as well as arrow keys, meanwhile the speakers are relegated to beneath the base. You'll find plenty of punch in those rounded keys, and the slightest curve to their surface. Samsung managed to achieve delightfully thin bezels on the display's sides, squeezing a 15-inch diagonal screen within a 13.67-inch wide frame. Likewise, the laptop measures just 1.7 centimeters thin and weighs 1.7 kilograms. The screen is as color-rich as any of Samsung's smartphone displays, making the absolute most of its comparatively just satisfactory resolution of 1080p. Samsung also calls this a real-view display, able to shine at 350 nits brightness in normal mode and up to 450 nits in outdoor mode. This makes it easier to see your work or play in the sunlight, though it's still a glossy panel, making glare an inherent annoyance. That said, games and video look brilliant on the display, as do doodles in the Samsung Air Command app. The all-silver exterior of the Gram 15th of May look like plastic at first blush, but it's actually nano-carbon magnesium. LG says it meets mil std 810 g standards for durability. We didn't exactly put our Gram through the same battery of tests, but we will say it felt plenty stiff and durable. It's hard to appreciate this notebook until you pick it up. You can do that with just two fingers, as the Gram 15 is amazingly light at 2.41 pounds. It's actually a bit heavier than the first-generation Gram 15 Z960, which was 2.2 pounds, we suspect most of that difference comes from the larger battery on this model. Don't take that as a complaint, despite the extra weight, the Gram 15 is still scary light for a 15.6-inch notebook. The 15-inch Apple MacBook Pro is 4.02 pounds, and the Dell XPS 15 touches 4.44 pounds. The LG manages to be a bit trimmer than either of those notebooks, too, at 0.7 by 14.1 by 9 inches. Its thin bezels help it fit a 15.6-inch screen into a chassis that's just a tad larger than what we're used to seeing from 14-inch laptops. This looks to be the most portable 15.6-incher you can buy. Our only complaint about the LG's design is one of preference, its conventionally dull lines don't quite look the part of its $1,999 price tag. The MacBook Pro and the XPS 15 Touch manage classier looks. Different color schemes would have gone a long way. The keyboard backlighting has two levels of brightness. The non-standard three-column number pad layout is the only awkward part of the experience. In terms of year-on-year -year laptop improvements, we have literally never seen a glow up like the Dell XPS 15 2020. It's thinner, lighter, has smaller bezels and brings the speakers to the top of the device. 
With all of these improvements, the XPS 15 has catapulted ahead of the 13-inch model to be the Windows laptop to get. Now we get it, not everyone wants to carry around a bulky 15-inch laptop, no matter what kind of performance improvements come with the beefier hardware. However, this new XPS 15 is just 0.71 inches thick and weighs just 4.5 pounds. Definitely not the lightest laptop in the world, but with this kind of hardware and a battery that lasts as long as it does, it's definitely more portable than it even needs to be. As far as ports, things did get cut back quite a bit, with it being narrowed down to 3 Thunderbolt 3 ports, a SD card reader and a headphone jack. That does mean that folks that want to use a bunch of legacy peripherals will have to live that dongle life, but that's kind of the world we've been living in over the last few years anyway. The fact that Dell was gracious enough to include an SD card reader in a Finnish laptop in 2020 is more than enough to earn our praise, given that we're constantly on the hunt for our USB-C SD card adapter anyways. With how gorgeous the laptop is, anyway, we'll easily look past this lack of legacy ports. Seriously, made entirely of CNC aluminum with clean edges and that typical Dell logo on the outside, this is a stylish laptop. And, the carbon fiber is back on the keyboard deck, and it's just as comfortable as ever, even if it may get a little grungy over time. The GE75 Raider is second to MSI's flagship GT75 Titan in performance, the GT75 packs a more powerful Intel Core i9-8950HK processor versus this tester's Intel Core i7-8750H. For a more portable option, the GS75 Stealth is just 0.75 inch thick and under 5 pounds, with less storage expansion the key trade-off. Meanwhile, the GL73 is the budget choice, offering up to GeForce RTX 2060 GPUs. The new GE75 Raider went on a serious diet. At 1.1 by 15.7 by 10.6 inches, its measurements are trimmer in every dimension than the outgoing GE73 Raider. It's lighter, too, at just 5.8 pounds instead of 6.8 pounds. Much of the size and weight reduction is related to the thin bezel display on the GE75 Raider, effectively making it not much larger than a 15.6 inch notebook with a thicker bezel. I'm all for this trend in notebook design, as it results in a cleaner look and improved portability. MSI was still able to fit the webcam on top of the display in its rightful place, which isn't a guarantee with notebooks that shrink the bezels. Alas, the camera's tiny sensor and low 720p resolution make for muddy selfies, even in the best of lighting. MSI's backlit Dragon Shield logo and flanking, red striped ridges on the lid ensure that the GE75 Raider is recognized as a gaming notebook from 50 paces. On the materials front, MSI has moved away from the brushed aluminum look it so often used on its premium gaming notebooks. The matte finish aluminum on the GE75 Raider feels better quality and is easier to clean. It's mostly for aesthetics, covering the lid backing and the top of the chassis. The chassis has minimal lateral flex despite its plastic framing. The fit and finish is good, with consistently minimal gaps between parts.